Bird Tracks is sponsored by Polaris. Think outside. Yamaha revs your heart. And by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. When Yamaha brought the YXZ to market, the sports side-by-side -side world was shocked. But I think for 2021, with the introduction of a 64-inch wide, tilting rear dump box, 1,000cc recreational side-by-side -side in both two and four seat options is even bigger than the YXZ. And I say that not because there's anything wrong with the YXZ. In fact, it's one of my favorite sports side-by-sides because of its super fun gear-on-gear -gear design, allowing us to pound shifts to our heart's content. But this is a much more limited market. The 64-inch recreational market, on the other hand, is hot as ghost peppers and competitive as the entry line at a Trump rally. There's so many people getting into the side-by-side -side sport, and this is the category that really meets most folks where they're at. And Yamaha's offering for 2021 is the Wolverine R-Max 2 and R-Max 4. Both of these feature a brand new 1,000cc motor and all kinds of cool, new, useful technology. With 108 horsepower, Yamaha claims the best power in its category. They're also offering up the new R-Max with over 13 inches of ground clearance on both the two and four seater, and up to 14.2 inches of front suspension travel and 16.9 in the rear depending on the configuration. Add to this Fox IQS electronic suspension adjusted via an in-cab toggle, and you've got some of the incredible specs and super high level tech. There are also multiple packages of both two and four seat versions, and you can now even spec out the XTR and LE models that come from the factory with the Magellan Adventure Pro navigation system fully integrated into the dash. But this is just the beginning of what makes the R-Max so good. And in just a couple of short weeks, we're gonna have a full feature where Luke and I both take out the R-Max, put it through its paces, beat on it, and tell you exactly how it handles and performs in all kinds of different terrain. Now back to some more cool news from Yamaha. For 2021, there's an update of the Wolverine X2 and X4 that are now based off the R-Max models, but with the smaller 847cc twin engine. The overall look has been updated with redesigned doors and frame to allow for better entry and egress. The focus on the driver's seat, shoulder bolsters, pedals, and increased seat adjustability, along with the new adjustable seat belt, has completely changed the interior comfort of the X2 and X4 models. Also of note is the change to a 27-inch GBC Dirt Commander tire on all models, a tire that we've found to be a solid offering and much better than many other factory spec tires. While the YXZ doesn't see a whole lot of changes for 2021, there is one of the packages that they offer that I think is worth noting. The SS XTR package includes automotive quality painted bodywork along with a Yamaha exclusive Maxxis Carnage 8-ply radial tire package. Up front are centerline pod lights to add increased drivability in low light conditions, as well as an XTR specific front grab bar and a worn 4,500 pound VRZ winch, all pre-wired with fancy in-cab mounted switches. Over in the Grizzly world, there's a brand new SE model. And let me tell you, this ATV brings the highest level of refinement we've ever seen on a Grizzly to date. Painted bodywork that's truly second to none, and it's matched up nicely with Maxxis Silla tires mounted on very aftermarket looking 14 inch fancy aluminum rims and to complete it, a very high-level looking Grizzly. That's the best that I've ever laid my eyes on. And if you really want to take it up a notch, the XTR package takes all the SE goodness and gives you a factory-installed, worn Pro Vantage 2,500-pound winch as well. Over in the Kodiak Den, there really isn't a whole lot that's new, but this is an ATV that's been delivering solid performance at a really exceptional price for years. Still available in both 450 and 700 cc versions, the Kodiak can be spec'd with or without EPS and in one of six colors depending on the package that you choose. And those packages give you lots to think about, with the base models, EPS versions, and the highest spec SE coming equipped with worn Pro Vantage 2500 pound winches and upgraded aluminum rims. And rounding out the 2021 lineup is the Viking and Viking 6, Yamaha's purpose-built utility side-by-sides. While there's not much changed here for 21, the Viking is still a great utility farm and ranch side-by-side -side that will get the work done day in and day out. We can't help but wonder if a 1000cc version will be available with the R-Max engine in the future. All Vikings can tow up to 1,500 pounds off their factory-equipped two-inch hitch and pack up to 600 pounds on the rear cargo bed with a hydraulic rear assist dump box. Three versions of both three and six seat are available with the highest level being the ranch edition in copperhead orange metallic painted plastics and a wide array of included upgrades. While the big news for 21 is the R-Max 2 and R-Max 4, I think possibly of equal importance is the fact that Yamaha is so dedicated to this sport. 
and they're showing that with products that are driving consumers to showrooms and exciting people all across our sport. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. I do a lot of testing here at Dirt Tracks. ATVs, side-by-sides, aftermarket accessories, and tires. Loads of tires. And while our tire tests are well-informed, honest, and opinionated, there are tires that are my go-tos. For 2020, my top pick is the ITP Versacross V3. It's a jack-of-all-terrain tire that features an 8-ply rating. It's been updated for 2020 in the V3 version with deeper tread depth for better grip, but also one of my favorite features is the now wider range of rim diameters offered. Am I all about the bling? Well, no. Functionality comes first, but with the Versacross V3, you get the ultimate all-terrain do-all versatility, so why not go for the gusto and trick out your ride with 14, 15, 18, or 20-inch rim options? The word all-terrain is a little bit vague. It does cover the broadest range of trail riding, but when it comes to selecting a tire, there's typically three different categories, all-terrain, sand, or mud. The ITP Cryptid is not an all-terrain tire, but if I'm headed into the swamp and looking to be the first and sometimes the only one to make it through, this is my tire of choice. It's aggressive, it's gnarly, and it's ready to slang some mud with a graduated lug that's 1.5 inches at the center of the tire and grows to two inches at the outer shoulder. Why is this design something that I like? Well, most mud-specific tires will use a continuous height lug, but because a tire is obviously round, they taper off. The Cryptid has a square top profile because of the half-inch taller outer lug, and this gives you enormous traction at the outer edges where much of your mud-biting traction is gained. I put these tires to the test, and they were beyond capable in the most aggressive and deep situations that I could find. But truthfully, that's really a full-on, I ride mud type of tire. And one thing that I found ITP to be really good at is not just sticking to those classic three categorizations, but being able to bridge the gap in between those with what I'll call crossover type tires. And possibly my favorite tire of all time has replaced my previous favorite tire of all time. That's the Mud Light and its updated side-by-side -side friendly sibling, the Mud Light 2. Quite possibly the most versatile tire ever built in my humble opinion, the Mud Light 2 is a true crossover tire. Sure, it's got mud in its blood, but it's a tire that will continually surprise you with its versatility in rock, hard packed, and even sandy conditions. Heck, we even run it in the snow and have found it to be not just good, but excellent when plowing. And ITP must agree because they offer the Mud Light 2 in tons of sizes, from 23 inch all the way up to 30s. The older Mud Light and its different versions are a great ATV tire, but the compound wore down quicker and it wasn't good for side by sides due to the increased weight. The Mud Light 2 has changed significantly and is now an incredible side-by-side -side or ATV tire with six-ply rating and an improved cord structure to reduce flex with heavier vehicles. The tread compound was updated as was the lug layout and it made for a much longer life tire that wore less and still is able to provide grip from the swamp to the rock garden and everything that I've encountered in between. Now, if it's the rugged and harsh terrain of the desert that I'm looking to ride, the Coyote has proven to be a beast to go to battle with. Built for the highest horsepower side-by-sides and specifically with the desert in mind, the Coyote is DOT compliant and built tough with an 8-ply rating. Three quarters of an inch lug depth with center lug channels allow the tire to actually flex around the terrain and provide the ultimate grip when the heat is on and the power is big. Now, likewise, if I'm looking to rip the big horsepower side-by-sides on the trails and local terrain here at home, the Terra Hook is a beastly tire designed with many similar features and strength ratings to the Coyote, but an improved compound and lug layout for all-terrain riding. The Coyote is available up to 35 inch diameter, while the Terra Hook maxes out at 32. Tires are as important as the rig that you mount them to. Without them, you're not going anywhere. And with the wrong ones, you'll struggle to get places. The right tires will take you without hesitation. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Shock Strap. Start strapped, stay strapped. Securement is a pretty big topic for us here at Dirt Tracks, and that's because we're always moving something. ATVs and side-by-sides for sure, but on the weekends it's personal stuff like motorcycles, tractors, or cars. And over the years we've heard a lot of myths, and we want to try to dispel some of those. And firstly is the myth that all straps have been created equal. This is not the case, never has been. Cheap bulk pack straps you pick up at the hardware or big box store are built with one thing in mind, price. Not safety, not durability, and certainly not longevity. Quality built straps like these from Shock Straps are built not only for long-term safe securement, but also serviceability, with a wide variety of replacement parts available to rebuild any part of your strap thanks to the bolted and not riveted design. 
Parts are readily available and priced inexpensively. Others that we see continually are the one strap fits all jobs approach or the just add more straps. Both of these, yeah, not so good. One strap certainly does not do all jobs. Those dollar store tie downs are not okay for your 6,000 pound car, nor would I trust them to a $40,000 Harley or a $30,000 side by side. Shock straps have straps that cover a wide variety of applications and most importantly, weight ratings. And trust me, weight ratings are important because if you exceed them, you're breaking the law, but more importantly, putting everyone else around you at risk on the road. Keep in mind the safe working load limit of a tie down strap is one third its actual braking strength. That means a 1500 pound budget strap braking strength rating is actually only capable of safely and legally holding a 500 pound object. So tying down a 6000 pound object with four of these is actually 4000 pounds overweight and totally illegal. If you compare the shock strap two inch ratchet with military grade webbing to the cheaper straps, it'll outperform an entire four pack. Yeah, that's the strength of a four pack in just one shock strap. Not to mention the quality level and serviceability it offers. That two inch, two year warranted shock strap with military grade webbing is rated at 6,000 pounds braking strength and has a safe working load limit of 2,000 pounds. So the same securement scenario of a 6,000 pound object as I mentioned earlier, means with four shock straps, you have 8,000 pounds of safe working load limit if you use one strap on all four corners of the object, leaving you 2,000 pounds of added safety Plus you get the always important feature of shock straps, shock reducing urethane isolators, keeping your objects safe and your straps stress free. Keep in mind shock straps, one inch cam strap will work excellent for an ATV. And you'll also be well under each shock strap safe working load limit on a side by side with the 1.5 inch ratchet strap. But here at Dirt Tracks, we always err on the side of caution. So reaching for the two inch straps is our go-to and in securement, a little extra has never hurt. Another area that you should be aware of is stretch and shear on the two major materials that are used in securement straps. Your budget straps will use nylon webbing. This type of strap will stretch up to 40% and it also absorbs moisture. And that's why you can never seem to stop clicking away extra tightening ratchets at each stop. The nylon also has a tendency to shear straight across if it comes in contact with a sharp object. And we've all seen the ends of a strap that is sheared on our own load or waving in the wind on the side of the highway, looking all fuzzy and cut straight across. The webbing shock strap uses is polyester. It does not shear. It actually sheds moisture and it only stretches a max of 20%. Add in the shocks built into the strap and that means that while you should always stop and check your load for safety, you won't need to tighten it up. It stays tight every time. And trust me, we have over 50,000 miles of shock strap use, summer and winter, and we've never had a strap fail, come loose or shear. Safe securement of your toys is important. It keeps your hard earned investment safe, it keeps others out on the road safe, and when you use a quality product like shock straps, it's something that you know is gonna be around for years to come and a product that us here at Dirt Tracks truly believe in. Closed captioning of Dirt Tracks is sponsored by MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race inspired, trail proven. I take my job seriously. Yes, it's a lot of fun, but every time I sit down to do a review on anything, I start by reminding myself that the reason you're here is because you trust my opinion and you trust that I'll tell it like it is. Today we're going to take a look at CF Moto's new Z Force 950 Sport, and we're going to try and accomplish two things before we're done here. First, I want to answer some of the questions you've asked and address some of the points you raised on my walk around video. And second, I want to lay bare the good and the bad about CF Moto's new flagship model. First, let's take a look at what the Z Force actually is. Now, obviously, one quick glance and you know it's a sport side by side, but what's it made of? The chassis is all new. It houses a 963cc fuel injected twin cylinder engine mated to a CV transmission. A 60 inch wide set of double A arms up front yield 11 inches of travel, and a four link trailing arm suspension system CF Moto calls the Quad Link yields just under 12 inches of travel out back. Both ends are damped by a set of compression and rebound adjustable CF Moto branded piggyback shocks. The motor produces a claimed 80 horsepower, which is obviously less than most other 60 inch sports side by sides. And this brings me to the first point I want to address that you guys brought up about my original walk around video on this unit. How does CF Moto measure horsepower? Many of you commented that you'd heard the reason this vehicle is down on horsepower compared to its competition is because CF Moto measures engine horsepower somewhere after the secondary clutch, some claiming it's actually measured at the wheels. 
I called the CF Moto engineer directly to find out the truth, and he confirmed that CF Moto measures their engine horsepower just like every other side-by-side -side manufacturer does in North America at the crank, which means the Z Force 900 is simply down 20 horsepower to much of its competition, which initially seemed like a shame. Then I drove it, and I can say with all confidence, this engine feels like it has way more than 80 ponies. It pulls hard off the line and has no trouble spinning its wheels in the dirt or getting sideways in the corners. I suspect this is largely due to impeccable clutch tuning by the crew at CV Tech. Where you do notice the horsepower deficit is from mid-range onward. The Z Force 950 doesn't have the long legs of its competitors when it's wound out completely, but it's definitely not disappointing. One thing I want to point out about the 950 that struck me immediately is the drastic improvement in overall build quality compared to previous CF Moto Sport models. Everything about this unit is better. From the fit and finish of the plastics, to the quality of the welds, to the fit and feel of the switch gear, it all just feels excellent. CF Moto has upped its finish quality standards big time and they deserve to be recognized and applauded for it. When we talk about the chassis, we're talking about ride quality and handling. The specs suggest this thing should ride pretty well. It doesn't have the most travel in its class, but with a set of fully adjustable piggyback shocks, it should be capable of a plush yet well-controlled ride. Unfortunately, this isn't the case. With all the shocks set to full soft and the springs wound out completely, the ride was harsh at best, especially in the rear. Every bump, big or small, upset the chassis and was felt all the way through the seat. The front was better, but not by a lot. After riding the Z Force back to back with its competition, it became even more clear that the ride quality needs a serious look. I think the place to start is softer spring rates, and I think the proof of this is that even with the springs all the way out, the ride height didn't change at all. Likewise, handling leaves something to be desired. I think this is closely linked to the harsh ride characteristics of the suspension. It just didn't feel settled or planted at any point. Drifting on a smooth fire road was controllable and the power steering system is actually tuned very well. But as soon as any kind of rough surface was thrown into the mix, the chassis got quickly out of shape and didn't want to hold a straight line. I think the best way to describe it would be to say that at high speeds on rough terrains, it didn't do what I wanted it to when I wanted it, but it did do what I didn't want it to when I didn't want it. There's some work to be done here and I sincerely hope CF Moto puts in the time because the rest of the Z Force 950 is actually very good. The interior, for example, is excellent. The seats are well bolstered and even as a big guy, I find them extremely comfortable. The dash looks slick and those switches are some of the best switch gear in the industry. The shifter is a thing of beauty. The doors, or part doors, or whatever they are, while not at all useful for deflecting mud and dirt, have a very sturdy feel, operate smoothly and positively, and don't rattle. This gauge is, it's beautiful is the best way I can describe it. It's not big, but it's so bright, and the information on the screen is so crisp and easy to read, it's almost like it's a 4K display or something. It's solidly mounted on the steering column, and is always right where you want it to be when you need some info. The screen auto switches into a black scheme when things get dark and there are two completely different gauge displays for eco and sport modes. Visually the Z Force 950 has a love it or hate it kind of look. There's no question it's unique which I think is good and it definitely has some cool styling cues. But what I like most is that in a sea of sport side by sides that are all starting to look very much the same, this one looks completely different. I like how the shiny colored hood curves right over into the dashboard. I like how the rear fenders are cut on an upward angle and I like the accent lighting on the head and tail lights. I like these 27 inch stag tires, but I do not like these flower power-esque 14 inch aluminum wheels that look like they'd be right at home on a VW Beetle or a Kia Soul. At first, I didn't like the Honda Pioneer 500 style rear rack but the more I used it, the more it actually grew on me, and there's no question, rearward visibility is absolutely incredible, thanks in part to the lack of an actual cargo box. You guys wanted to know my opinion on CF Moto's new for 2021 Z Force 950 Sport. Now I've tried to be fair, but also completely honest. My final thoughts on this unit relate to price and subsequently value. The Z Force 950's closest competitor would be Polaris's Razor Trail S900. It too is 60 inches wide and produces just shy of 80 horsepower. In Canada, it retails for $800 less than the Z Force 950, 
However, the Z-Force has power steering, a better gauge, fully adjustable shocks, and in Canada, comes with a winch, roof, mirrors, and a five-year limited warranty. Should you go out and buy a Z-Force 950 Sport? That's a question only you can answer. I've done my best to give you my honest opinion so that you can go out and make the best decision possible. If you enjoyed this segment, make sure you hit that like button and definitely consider leaving us some comments. We always appreciate hearing from our fans. Also, make sure you subscribe because we have tons of new content coming up right here on Dirt Tracks.